has a great influence on your outlook. And I think this is especially true for those of us who do creative work. Here in New Brunswick, we are away from many of the tensions and complexities of the 20th century. We're able to work at our own pace, and there's time to think. We are never far from the woods, the fields, and the sea. And nature itself is an endless source of inspiration. This influence is quite apparent in the pottery that my husband Kel Dykman and I make. This is the heart of our work, Kel at the potter's wheel, a technique unchanged over thousands of years. I form other pieces by an even older method, modeling. But before we see more of our work, I think it would be interesting to visit with some of the other craftsmen of the province. Right here in our own town of Sussex, Bart and Lucy Uteval have gained a wide reputation for their handmade silverware and jewelry. they too get their basic materials from their surroundings. The right stones are carefully selected and then come the hours of painstaking work. are set into handsomely finished pieces that have earned the Utevals many prizes at exhibitions. Native wools are used by many of the local weavers who often work in their own cottages and farmhouses. Here in St. Andrews, a community enterprise founded many years ago is being continued. The work of the local weavers is processed at this central location. Original dyes and time-proven methods give the tweeds their unique character. of the Charlotte County Cottage Crafts are sold throughout Canada and the United States, as well as here in their own shop at St. Andrews. In the old Acadian town of St. Leonard, the Madawaska weavers carry on a much larger operation. Although their output is great, their standards remain very high. Their work is particularly known for its intricacy of design. Another approach to weaving is taken by Patricia Jenkins of the Loom Crofters in Gagetown. Pat is an internationally known weaver who specializes in tartans.
She takes great care with her work, and the results have been rewarding. She was commissioned to design the tartans for the Royal Canadian Air Force in the province of New Brunswick. Recognition like this is a great encouragement to craftsmen, but, as with all creative people, the greatest satisfaction comes from the work itself. This has always been true of my husband, Kel. As a young man in Europe, he studied painting and sculpture, but when we came to New Brunswick in 1932, his interest turned, quite by accident, to a new medium. For him, this medium of clay has been the most stimulating and satisfying. is built up gradually and may be on the wheel a couple of days. It must be kept moist, for if it is allowed to dry out, it can no longer be worked. And of course, the ideas of a younger generation are often helpful. Our daughter Annika is developing an unusual style of her own. Much of my enjoyment comes from the decorating. It's quite different from applying brush to canvas. The raw clay is smoother, allowing the brush to move more freely. After a piece has been fired once, it must be glazed. When this is done, the piece is ready for the final firing in the kiln room. Here, the finely ground minerals the glazes are composed of will be melted together to produce the desired colors and textures. The glaze firing will last about 10 hours. After the kiln has been covered with special insulating bricks, it is ready to be fired. It's been going about nine hours now. The temperature is nearing 2600 degrees. If the distribution of heat has not been even, some of the pieces may be underfired or cracked. It is not until a full day later, when the kiln has cooled, that we see whether the firing has been successful. There is nothing quite to equal the excitement of a first look at work that's turned out well. craftsmen, our first objective must always be to satisfy ourselves. We also appreciate the interest so many other people have shown in our work since we began it over 25 years ago. Each year, we receive many visitors to our home in Sussex. Some are developing a new interest in pottery. Others have a more discerning eye. The most 
frequent questions are about the glazes. Metallic oxides and carbonates are the coloring agents. Through the years, we have made thousands of experiments with glaze compositions. Ago, the craftsman filled a practical need in daily life. But with the coming of mass production, it seemed that his work was no longer needed. Lately, however, there has been a widespread renewal of interest in handicrafts. More and more people seem to be acquiring an appreciation for handmade things. This new awareness is reassuring to craftsmen everywhere. And we here in New Brunswick hope that the things we make will continue to give pleasure 